another edition of Life Plus. We're here just looking at how our pets age. Not only do we age, but the pets do too. And we're here, I'm Audrey Galix and this is Marilyn Johnson. And we are here with two-year-old Cam who's with his mom Michelle and we'll have some tips for them and for you on how to take care of aging pets, what kinds of things you can do to modify your home and uh, other things for them. And we'll also have our tech tip with Jane Ratliff of Blue Hair Technology Group. So stay with us I can. and enjoy your Life Plus. Throughout our lives, many of us are accompanied on the journey by a dog or cat or some other animal companion. They may have come into our lives as puppies or kittens or piglets, but now it's likely time has passed and we're all a little gray around the muzzle. Perhaps as seen in this home video, you find yourself not just at the doctor for your own aches and pains, but heading to the vet for your pet. I need to get a refill on these meds. And we may be dealing with the same maladies too. I'm really sorry. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, let's try it. Oh. It's not always fun, but the unconditional love they offer makes it all worthwhile. Edward McNally knows about, well, puppy love and losing an older dog who's been a longtime family member. It's, it's tough to bond with other animals going forward, knowing that we'll only have them for a certain amount of time, but even the dog we're fostering, we already are kind of in love with. So it's just, you open yourself up to, to love and to loss. And this is a lesson for every living being. I mean, every family member, every friend. Together, they raised two dogs, Malcolm and Sonia, and then one day, Malcolm developed a cough. They took him for x-rays. They said there's a mass in his throat. It's a very unusual tumor. It's along the lymph nodes. And if you do nothing, he has eight weeks left. And this is a dog that had, you know, gotten a bill of health like he would live to be 16 easily, you know, just a couple months before. So we were in, pretty much in shock and, and in denial, really, especially my wife. She said, there's no way. He's going to beat this. This just can't be. So we spent a lot of money on the best chemotherapy you can buy, three different types over a course of a year. And how's that? Well, $20,000, actually. <laughs> And, um, but it was worth every penny. I mean, we just dug into our 401k. We just, we didn't, we went without a lot. But I mean, if it, it was, this was our child, you know. I don't know any parent who wouldn't pay that. I had cancer when I was 19, and I went through chemo for a year and a half. So I felt like, you know, we were told dogs don't technically really recover from cancer. You can just extend their life a little bit if they're that age. But I was, I knew what chemo was like, and I knew the technology had gotten better. It's generally much easier on animals. But he had to be fed by hand. There was a lot he didn't want to eat, and so we would roast. My wife's a vegetarian, almost a vegan, really, but we roasted pork and chicken, and that fresh roasted pork and chicken he would eat. And we fed him sort of by hand, and he would spit it out because it was making him a little nauseous, the chemo. But eventually he would eat it. The house was like an infirmary. He would have to get fluid sometimes, but he still loved us. He was still, uh, as, the, as the chemo would wear off between sessions, he would want to take longer and longer walks, and he would still play with a ball, which he hadn't played in a while, and still be happy to see you on good days. I mean, you know, so he had a lot of good days in that final year. It was, he says, super emotional. He hung on for us. We were there for him. He was there for Sonia. They were, we were, grew incredibly, as close as we were, we all grew even closer and grew more compassionate and appreciative of every little thing. He also had, had hurt his leg slightly, just tripping on a sheet at about the same time as the surgery, which is bad timing. I mean, he had the tumor, first tumor removed, and it grew back. 
unfortunately. Um, so he was also in this brace, this very well-made brace by Orthopets of Denver, just an expert brace, and took him a couple days to get used to it, and then he was fine. I happened to have hurt my exact same tendon <laughs> in a little scooter accident at about the same time. So I was in a boot for six weeks. So to see us both, because now what he couldn't do is go down um, to the backyard. So he had to be taken, when he was getting used to that brace, he had to be taken out in the middle of the night or in the morning. And I'm not a morning person. And so basically it was a zombie being walked by, <laughs> by a zombie dog. It was pretty funny. But the important thing is, after taking walks for blocks, and I mean, Shimon would take him for miles, like nine mile walks. It was amazing. We'd go hiking. There were days when he could only make it a couple yards away, or maybe down to the end of the street and back. And that became true for Sonia, too, in her last year. So after living here 16 years, I, being someone with a lot of energy, changed my whole perspective changed my whole pace. Now it was a walking meditation. And you got to know every tree, every plant, details about homes next door I'd never seen before. Got to know my neighbors. So it's, it's, it, it became a, there were gifts even in the aging process and in the disability. And the, the love there was always super powerful. When Malcolm passed away from a heart attack, they gave Sonia an opportunity to grieve too. And we, we made a point when we picked up Malcolm from the vet where he had passed to bring him here. It's very important that any other pets see the dead dog so they don't just think, where'd he go? He's missing. We're, I'm running to the door wondering where he is. So Sonia knew that Malcolm was gone. And by that time, Sonia had slowed down too before she died. As she got older, she just got naturally a little slower. She did have a problem with one eye about a year and a half ago, and that eye had to be removed, but then it, it healed pretty nicely. She just looked like she was always winking. <laughs> um, but she just got sort of slow, but she had no major health problems. She saw her ortho, sort of orthopedic specialist two days before she died, and she got a good bill of health. Like, I thought, this is a dog that might make it to 17. But she was slower. We had, she had a special harness that you could actually pick her up. We had carpets everywhere because she would sort of slip on the hardwood floors and it'd be hard to, because of her arthritis, it'd be hard to get up. But once she was up, she could move around. She would walk down to the end of the block and back. She still ate fine, you know. And, uh, she, you know, she had given up walking all the way down to the yard maybe a year before, so she was using our large back deck as her bathroom, but we were okay with that. It's a wooden deck. So she was just fading slowly. And yes, there was some light, a certain spark that was gone, but she was still, the sweetness was always there. She would still come up to us, she still enjoyed treats. It was, she slept on this, her own little bed right next to our bed. With both of them gone, McNally thought they should wait before adopting again. But then Angel entered the picture. And I wanted to be alone with my grief, because I work at home. So these dogs had been my best friends for 16 years. I mean, Siobhan's incredibly empathetic. She's at the CDC, but also works at home sometimes. And I mean, she bonds amazingly with all animals. So they were like her children, but for me, I couldn't remember being in this house without Sonia, frankly, and it was very strange. It, it would have been very hard, and Siobhan just felt like there was a reason we got that email for a dog named Angel, and it was the right thing to do, and she, we, 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 we were sort of led to believe it was a much smaller puppy, <laughs> um, and that that would just be, to have this life in the house would be good. And so I agreed to do it to help Siobhan. I mean, her mourning period over Malcolm was very, very hard. And she, you know, to, to then lose Sonia, I mean, it was a very different kind of death, but we each have mourned in different ways. The altar with their remains, their toys and cards from loved ones helps, and so do the memories preserved in pictures and on video. We wish we'd taken more pictures. and wish we'd taken more video and longer video. 
A lot of times, you know, people just grab their little quickie and it's like you're looking at that little snippet and all of a sudden it's gone. And we had, what we did, what we were sort of lucky about in one way, in that we had a long time to say goodbye to Malcolm and Sonia in certain ways. So we have great, nice, wonderful video of them in their later years, but not nearly enough when they were younger. So I'm taking some of this little girl just because she's adorable, but um, I just tell people, and not just the elaborate fun tricks, sure you want to get that, get the sound of them running in and out of the dog door, the sound of them lapping up water, the sound of them scratching or shaking when they're wet, or the funny little snorts and things, the little funny sound, get that stuff. Just let that phone or whatever sit there for a minute or two. Because you will, we just sit, there are a lot of nights where we just watch, we call them just watch some Malcolm videos. And based on experience, McNally offers this piece of advice for people with aging pets. Get pet insurance. Trust me, that few hundred bucks a year will really pay off rather than having to write those four digit checks if, they, if something happens. Because um, most people I know will be heartbroken if they can't pay it and will do everything they can to pay it. And if, if, if they've got that insurance, believe me, it's worth it. Um, so that's something we didn't really think about when we had them. Um, and it's harder, it can be harder to get that if, if they're older. In return for that investment, raising dogs has taught him invaluable life lessons. You know, people in our family live a long time. My grandmother's lived to be 104, 108. My dad died five years ago of cancer after, you know, at 86. But other incredibly vital people could go like this. So you just have to make the most of every moment and do not sweat the small stuff. I mean, what I regrets, when I was getting used to having them when they were younger and they were puppies, I wish I'd given them a little more time and walked them some more. I was starting my own business, I was working on a conference and I was, he wanted to be on my lap, he wanted to be walked and I, I'd been told by the trainer, you know, you, you have to let them know you're in charge and so I didn't give them as much time as I wish I had. I'm giving this dog more time every day just because it's great for them but it's good for me you know and it's just whatever it is you're doing that day some of it can wait till later some of it can wait till tomorrow and what the older you get they realize most of it doesn't really matter that much so go hug your pets or take a quick walk with them grab a pen and paper you're going to get a how-to on how to care for your aging pet life plus will return in a moment to find out more about caring for an aging pet, we visited La Vista Animal Hospital in Decatur, Georgia, but got stopped on the way in. Yeah, old Your hair kitty. looks pretty. Oh, thank that's you. a great haircut. Oh, thank you. She's 15. Wow, yeah. that's pretty old, isn't I it? I have a question to ask about her sister, as who's also an elderly cat. Uh huh. She's one of these few cats who has never like buried her feces. So now she's gotten to where she will only go on the floor. She won't go in the litter box at all. She'll go, she'll urinate in the litter box. Any, on aging pets, any? Wow, <laughs> he won't, like not. Any answers on that. Wait, uh, no, uh, urinate outside the litter box? You know what somebody She'll told. urinate in the litter box, but she will poop outside the litter box. Interesting, because you know, we had something going on like that, and someone suggested that maybe the eyesight was the issue. Since we really had no clue how to handle this medical question, we decided to check in with second-generation vet Flint Walton and vet tech Rodney Wooten. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Wow, we've got a friendly one here. Yeah. <laughs> They're giving Golden Retriever Sandy Ballinger a thorough medical once-over. Um, kind of the basis of what we're going to be doing is just going over just a general physical exam just in an elderly pet and um, also just going over some of the disease um, areas that can develop just with age and just some warning signs and just what to look for just as a pet owner. Um, so just as a physical exam, um, we normally start from the head and go back to the tail and just what we like to look at is just make sure that the eyes are good and healthy looking. Um, just like with people, animals can get cataracts and just lens issues um, with age, so we just like to make sure and check that the eyes still look nice and clear. Um, two, just checking on the ears, just making sure that you know there's no infection or, any, or anything, which 
older animals, just like people, can become more susceptible to um, just, you know, skin, um, you know, health issues that normally at a younger age would not have debilitated them as much. Uh, then we look at the teeth, which is something that uh, is an area that they can get just tartar and plaque um, just with age. And so Sandy's got a little bit just on these back teeth, but nothing too bad. Um, two, just in the oral cavity too, we look for uh, just potentially cancer um, and just growths. Um, and check the lymph nodes and just the throat. Once again, just kind of giving them a good thorough, just once over. Luckily for her, it's kind of like a massage. And then two, once we get to the legs, um, is just checking for just good joint mobility. Um, arthritis, just like in people, is something that can really start to debilitate older animals as well. And two, one thing that people can do at home is just making sure that they keep their pets at a good healthy weight because just like with us, the more weight we carry around, the more joint pain and um, predilection towards um, arthritis that we're gonna have. Um, Sandy actually does have a heart condition that she developed um, within the past two and a half months. And so she is on heart medications that just help her heart become, just, just to pump more efficiently. Um, so that's another thing that we do is just listen to the heart. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. And says the doctor, pet insurance is a safe bet. It doesn't cover the annual exams in most cases, but it does cover the unexpected emergencies. For example, if the dog got hit by a car or, um, you know, ate something around the house, foreign body-wise that it wasn't supposed to, and we had to go in and just take that out. Um, and also, to some degree, you know, just cancer-related okay. conditions, um, they will um, tend to cover, um, you know, just removal of a mass or something if it is operable. Now, back to the checkup. You Just listening um, just to the heart, just listen for a good, strong beat. Um, and also just her lung sounds as well because they can develop, you know, lung cancer just as easily as we can. Um, other parts of the physical exam, um, we feel their abdomen because they can get um, just um, growths within the abdomen which could be cancerous or not. Um, and two, uh, just with the back legs, um, elderly animals or just aging animals can tend to have a lot of just hip problems um, just because of just getting up and down, you know, the back legs really just help them. Um, and that's something that can develop just with age and also with weight conditions as well. Um, other th important things, just as part of the physical exam that we do recommend, um, at around uh, eight years old is generally when, you know, we start to consider, you know, both cats and dogs um, senior. And so that is when we start to start recommending um, blood work just annually just to make sure that even though we're doing as much as we can on the phys um, external physical exam um, the blood work is kind of like doing an internal physical exam and that picks up on red and white blood, blood counts which uh, might indicate an infection or just some cancer issues going on there too and also just systemic organ function like liver, kidneys, pancreatic function and just electrolyte values. Um, luckily Sandy's when we just recently ran it besides the heart condition everything looked good um, and um, otherwise um, as far as just other certain maintenance things that we can do besides the blood work um, to help keep them health healthy is uh, things like uh, just routine dental um, cleanings because the bacteria in their mouth can actually get absorbed through the gum tissue and can actually cause liver, kidney, or even heart um, conditions. Um, and then two other things like for Sandy, um, just like people can take is glucosamine and chondroitin supplements, which help to thicken up your joint fluid and just um, help to lubricate the joints. Um, and also just at a certain age, you know, even incorporating in like anti-inflammatories, kind of like a person would take Advil or Aleve or ibuprofen for um, just arthritis or joint pain, we can incorporate the same thing with them, luckily. And just like many people who aren't used to being videotaped, Sandy was shaking. She's anxious. Yeah. She wants to be pet. And just like humans at every age, pets need exercise. 
getting around and moving and keeping those joints good and mobile um, are gonna basically prevent the arthritis from occurring and just make them feel better and just give them more energy too. If you're thinking of getting a pet, be practical. The temperament of that breed and just of the animal itself. Um, obviously, you know, an older person might want to avoid, you know, um, working breed dogs such as like Jack Russells or Border Collies. Um, a dog that's really going to need a lot of exercise and energy and training. Um, and really go with something along the lines of maybe, you know, some of the smaller breeds like poodles, um, pugs, um, you know, uh, papillons, uh, Pomeranians. That's right, think small. Because if something were to happen, it's going to be hard for an older person to get, you know, a 100 pound dog into the vet if they're by themselves as opposed to 15 to 20 pound dog. Perhaps a pet rat or gecko is in the cards but not a goat, perhaps. Instead, consider an older pet. And so the advantages of just getting that older dog who is already house trained and probably has some tricks and things that the previous owner have already, had already taught to him um, is that you're gonna get a dog that is, first of all, more predictable because you know um, what you're getting just from the get-go. With the puppy, you know, they can be really cute and cuddly from the beginning and their developmental stages, and then they can really, um, you know, have um, behavioral issues or just stubborn tendencies that you never would have been able to predict prior to just adopting them. And particularly in our later years, it's just nice to get that unconditional love that our animal companions often provide. When, you know, they're growing older and their family usually lives away, they have a companion that they can spend the day with and really uplift them and really just keep them in a positive state of mind, which is really what it's all about. And of course, it's sweet to celebrate older pets by sharing their pictures with friends and family on social media like Facebook. And that's the subject of our Tech Talk. Hi, this is Jane Ratliff with Blue Hair Technology Group. And today's tech tip is all about Facebook and posting those great pictures you're taking. All your friends are taking pictures and posting them and that's why you like Facebook, so now it's your turn to add some great pictures that you've taken. So let's go ahead and tap on the Facebook app and walk through how you do that. First, it's really important that you have the picture on your iPad or your iPhone if you're using your iPhone to post a picture. You need to have the picture on your device. So we're on our news feed now and you can see at the top there's three options. One says status, one says photo, and one says check in. Well, we're adding a photo, so we're going to go ahead and tap the photo icon. And up opens up my camera roll. I'm going to tap on the one picture that I want. You can tap on multiple ones if you want to, but you can notice that, I mean, notice that it puts that little one on there just to let you know that it selected that. We can hit done. And it's going to now create the post. It's inserted the picture. And now it's time to put the description in. So we can say, if I tap up there, I can say having fun with Audrey, who is the executive producer, or the producer of the show here, with Audrey. I'll make sure I got her. And see, her name comes up. She's actually a friend of mine. So once I start typing her name in the post, it's looking through all of my contacts or friends to see if I'm typing in someone that I'm friends with. So I can go ahead and tap Audrey, and it puts her name in there. But it's also doing something else important. It's actually tagging her in that post. Tagging her means that her friends are going to be made aware that a picture has just been posted of her. So be very careful when you tag people in posts and make sure they don't mind that you're doing it. So having fun with Audrey Galix at AIB. There we go. 
So now she's in the post. I've said what I wanted to say. I'll scroll down here. You can see that it's automatically, again, tagged me. It has what, what's called facial recognition, so it actually recognizes faces. And I can also tap on Audrey's face, and it will say, who is that person? So I can start typing in her name. There she comes. Isn't that a fun picture? We just took that picture. So there's the two of us. I'm going to tap done. You can see that we're both tagged. Again, make sure you're tagging people only if they've given you permission. Uh, sometimes people don't want that. A couple other things down at the bottom. One other icon you see, well, there's a couple icons, but the one that I want to point out is this, it's a location marker. If I tap on that location marker down there, it's actually saying, where are you? So we'll see if it's listed here, and it is. A lot of businesses have pages on Facebook, so it knows where I'm located right now. So it's saying, well, you're at a couple places. I can be, I could be at Georgia Tech because I'm close to that. I could be the High Museum of Art, but I'm actually at Atlanta Interfaith Broadcasting. So I can type that, and now it's actually added that to my post. So now it says, having fun with Audrey at AIB, and it says, with Audrey, because I tagged her in the picture, at Atlanta Interfaith Broadcasting. So now I'm ready to post to all my friends and to Audrey's friends that we're having a great time. So I'm going to hit the post button. It's doing it. It's thinking it. And now, although here it is, it just posted it. So now we're going to wait for all those great comments that people are going to say about what an awesome picture it is. So, but that's how you do it. Remember, go to the top. You're going to tap photo. You're going to add the photo that's already on your device. You're going to add some comments. You can tag the person if you want to. You can add the location that you, you're at. And look it, I already got a notification. <gasps> Audrey likes my photo already, so we're all set. So that's how you add a photo and share it with your friends on Facebook. I'm Jane Ratliff with Blue Hair Technology Group. Well, thanks so much for watching. We hope that you got a lot of good information about how to take care of your beloved furry friend. And speaking of beloved friends, I'd like for all of us to uh, keep in mind Marilyn's beloved pet Oreo who lost his life in an untimely way in a house fire a few months back. We'd like to keep him in our memory and all of our beloved pet pets in memory. Well, we thank you for watching us and look forward to seeing you again next week. Remember, live life plus.